Good afternoon, friends and followers of Jesus. We want to welcome you today to week five of our Lenten devotional series, uh, brought to you by the Federalsburg Ministerial Association. Uh, basically, a couple people said, what is this association? There's approximately 27 or 28 Christian churches here in our town, and we together are praying for our community, praying for God to bring heartfelt change into people's lives. And instead of saying that it's my way versus your way or someone else's way, we all agree to preach about Jesus, and we lift him up in his name, and we say how great he is, and we just accent who Jesus is, and that's the Federalsburg Ministerial Association. So this year, due to the COVID restrictions, we've been doing devotions online, and so we're really glad to have you here today. Pastor Eddie Alms from New Liberty Wesleyan Church will be our presenter this morning, and we're, we've been talking about the last words of Jesus on the day that he was crucified. When he said, it is finished, what does that mean? So you're going to hear a, an inspiring message this morning to take you deeper in your walk of faith with Almighty God through the following of his son, Jesus Christ. So we invite you to enter in during worship. Would you pray with us as we get ready to go before the throne? Father, we say thank you for this time of the year that we are reminded of your great love for us through Jesus Christ. Help us as we give our hearts to you, not only to hear something good today, but help us to hear your words that would transform our lives. Holy Spirit, teach us today. You know exactly what needs to be said. You know the hearts that will be tuned in. So have your way during this time. Jesus, thank you for going to the cross for me, for us. So Lord, have your way today, we pray. Amen. There's a place where sweet mercy reigns.
afternoon. Uh, today's uh, Lenten devotion. I'm going to be presenting God's word from the book of Philippians, chapter 4, verse 4 to 9. The book of Philippians, chapter 4, verse 4 to 9. I'm going to see, see what God's word has to see what God's word has to say. Oh, there we go. Yeah, sorry. All right, the book of Philippians chapter 4, verse 4 to 9. Let's see what God's word has to say to us. It says, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue, if there is any... The things which you learned and received and heard and saw in me, these do... And the God of peace will be with you. This year's theme, uh, the Fettelsburg Ministerial Association, this year's theme has been called, It is Finished. It is Finished is some of Jesus' last words on the cross. Some of the last things Jesus has ever said, we need to take to heart. I'll be working through that and how we can find peace in this life through the things that Jesus said. When Jesus said, It is Finished, He was signaling to the world there was no more need for sacrifices because his work on the cross brought ultimate fulfillment. The debt was wiped away completely and forever. Some may say, what debt? What debt is that, Pastor? The debt of sin that was saddled upon us like a millstone, a weight far too heavy for us to carry. Everyone that I find is looking for peace. Everyone wants peace in their life. No matter what you're going through, if you have peace, you are going to be able to endure it. One of the old hymns, I love the old hymns. This particular hymn is called, It Is Well With My Soul. It's a very well-known hymn. One of the, uh, ly- some of the lyrics, one of the verses in that uh, old hymn says, Peace like a river attendeth my way. The problem with that is, though, many of the rivers that I've been on were anything but peaceful. They were were very turbulent. So uh, peace like a river is not something I really associate with that. But you see, when you've been through some rough water, it is only then that you can appreciate when peace does come your way. When you've been through something, when you come out the other side, you truly appreciate it. You know God has been with you the whole time. The word peace, now we all know what peace is, but the word peace means a sense of harmony and well-being. Well, those words peace, harmony, and well-being, that seems to be in short supply today in the places that I go anyhow. The Old Testament mentions a variation of the word peace 180 times. I think he's trying to tell us something here. With the concepts, and in, the, in, the, in that concept... There's wholeness, completeness at its core. Now, I don't know of anyone who doesn't want to be whole or complete. It is good to feel whole or complete. You know, when you feel like something's missing and you're not sure how to put it back together in life, when that wholeness and completeness comes, boy, you know the hand of God was there. Sometimes you have to go through something to get to something good. Praise the Lord. The change that is needed in our lives starts within, not on the outside. Many times we try to fix the surface issues on the outside, but we're missing the big picture. If we were to only fix the things on the inside, the outside things would take care of themselves. We must always remember where our help comes from. Anxiety and stress can cause you to forget what God has already done. You'll focus on the things that are causing the anxiety and stress instead of God. 
stuck in stress or terrible companions. I'd like to leave them somewhere else instead of carrying them around at times. Even when you know where your help comes from, and many times you Many times we have to sit and think about what is going on, though. Do we realize that anxiety and stress do not exist in the natural world? The only place anxiety and stress exist is actually between our ears. It doesn't exist anywhere else. There is A tree doesn't grow anxiety. There is no cloud of distress that goes by. If there was a tree that had anxiety on it, I surely wouldn't pick that up of that fruit. <laughs> My goodness, I would leave that tree. I think I would try to burn that tree to the ground. As I, as I said, the anxiety and stress is something that we cause all by ourselves. We don't need any help doing that. I assure you, peace will never be found in anxiety and stress. I ask you, what is it that, call, that, uh, that brings you peace in life? You might get, you may say, well, that's, very, that's a simple answer. Well, it depends who you ask. You know, we try to find our peace in many different things. There are some things as a pastor that I say over and over again. Now, I think my congregation probably thinks I'm getting a little senile, you know, saying the same thing over. Doesn't he realize he said this last week and the week before? I'm not that far gone yet. I do realize I'm saying it. I do realize it. But, well, the reason I say things over and over again, because maybe there's some people out there like me that don't always grasp it the first time, and I have to hear it again before I start to grasp it. Now, maybe you are one of those people that you say, I got it the first time. But also like me, sometimes I just need to be reminded of things. There's nothing wrong. You know, one of my favorite sayings, and this is a spiritual thing to me, I must remember to remember. I must remember to remember. I say that often to myself even. I have to remember what God has already done. When I remember what God has already done, whatever I'm going through in the current situation doesn't look so bad because God never left me nor forsake me at any time. Now, maybe there's some people listening here today. Maybe you're like me, but... My mind never seems to be still. I can be laying in bed at night and my mind is still racing. I'm thinking about something that I've got to do or something that I'm planning. They say that we have 4,000 different thoughts a day. Now, where they get that from, I have no idea. I don't know who's sitting. How would you possibly count that? I don't know. But just for this sermon, just play along with me. We're going to say that's correct for, for right now. All right, now... I thought about this as well with those 4,000 thoughts. Now, if I've got something going on in my life that's troubling my spirit, those 4,000 thoughts go by the wayside. Guess what dominates my thoughts? The one. All the others go by the wayside. All I can meditate, all I can think about, no matter what I'm doing, I'm thinking about that one thing instead of all those other things. What is it that's dominating your thought? All those other thoughts, you know what, God created us like that. You know, he, did, he didn't create us to dwell on all the things, that, all the gloom and doom and all the negativity. God didn't wire us like that. I remember the things I want to forget. And I forget the things I want to remember. I told my congregation before, I, sometimes I'm a harbinger of useless information. I can remember things that don't mean anything. I shared a few weeks ago. I can remember my high school locker combination. Why would I remember that? That's just been a few days ago. But I tend to remember the things I don't need to remember and the things I need to remember I don't. There was a man named Tommy. He had a disease that at the age 19, he could not remember anything. So whenever he met somebody... It was as if he met them anew all over again, every single time. And I, and I did a little thinking on that. And I, when I got thinking, I was like, you know what? That can be good and that can be bad. The good is I won't remember all the hurt and the pain of this life. That's a good thing. <laughs> Who wants to remember that? But the bad is I also won't remember all 
what God has done for me already. And I won't be able to reflect back on that when I become in a situation that seems to be overwhelming me. I can't reflect back and say, you know what? I know God has already done this, so I can take confidence in what he's going to do. I won't be able to remember that. So that's bad. But at times, we tend to gravitate towards the negative, And we don't even think twice about what God has already done. I assure you, God didn't do all those things in our life just to let us go and just say, you know what, okay, I did it now, but I'll see you later. When, you, when it gets time to be in heaven, I'll see you then. He did not. No, he never left us nor forsake us once. But when we forget to remember what God has did, what God has done in our lives, we get all stressed out. God never warred us like that. How soon we forget. You say, well, I don't think anybody else goes through the things that I do. I can't relate. Nobody else seems to be able to relate to me. You know what? I can look into the scriptures. The 12 disciples. Boy, they did, they did a lot of things just like I've done. Some, some stuff that like, you know what? We're in good company. When, when, when we get stressed out, when we get anxiety, and we're, even though we know where our help comes from, we're in good company. The 12 disciples, you think about it, they walked and talked with Jesus for three years. They saw the miracles firsthand. They had seen the healings. They seen the teachings. They had a front row seat. But yet, when things came, when things overwhelmed them, what happened? They reverted right back to what they, what they knew before. When we feel overwhelmed by life, we just need to step back at times. But many times, we just try to go headlong into it. Remember, God does not want us to feel like that. He does not want us to become overwhelmed. Jesus himself said, cast all your burdens upon me. But he also said something very important, and he said it on the cross. He said, it is finished. It is finished. What is it that you need to say it is finished to? There's something you, you need to let go of. It is finished. Maybe it's something that's just brand new in your life and maybe overwhelming you. Or it may be something you've been dealing with for years. Or maybe you've had the victory over it and it just seems somehow there it is again. What is it you need to say it is finished to? Is it guilt? I jotted down just a few things. Is it guilt? Shame? Regret? Maybe unforgiveness? Maybe even some kind of dysfunction. Maybe you inherited somehow and it came down to you. But you're still living in that. What is it that you need to say it is finished to? Something we need to remember. God did not create you for those things that I just mentioned. He did not create you for that. The book of John chapter 8 verse 36 says, Whom the Son sets free is free indeed. I believe by Jesus saying it is finished, it was for our benefit. He didn't say those things. He wasn't talking to himself. The things that everything that Jesus did was for our benefit. He stepped down out of heaven for our benefit. He did not have to do it. He did it because he could. Unlike us, when Jesus said something, it has a purpose. He, Jesus, when, he, when his, his words mean things, a lot of times the things we talk about, they have no purpose to them. A lot of times they don't mean anything. We talk, just talk many times. We have many conversations that don't amount to a hill of beans. We have conversations that have no purpose. Sometimes we talk to hear ourselves talk. I think some people out there may even like the sound of their own voice. That is not the case with Jesus. When Jesus said something, it had a purpose. It meant something. So when he said it was finished, he meant it. He meant it. Many times we, we, we you know, try to tack on things. We have to add something to it. Jesus said it is finished. Simple as that. None of the things Jesus said on the cross was more important than it is finished. It is found only in the gospel of John it is finished. It is a term that means paid in full. I love to receive something and it says paid in full. I don't like it when I still owe something. When Jesus uttered these words, he was declaring the debt owed to his father was wiped away completely and forever. 
Not that Jesus wiped away any debt that he owed to the Father. Jesus eliminated the debt that was owed by us. And that was the debt of sin. Now, what I hear a lot today is people say, Pastor, I have issues. Very rarely do I hear somebody say, Pastor, I have sin in my life. You know, what I find is if you take care of the sin, the issues tend to clear yourself up. Now, I'm going to leave you with this as I close. I want you, this Lent season, I want you to remember to remember what God has already done for you. And I want you to remember to remember what he said. Jesus said, it is finished. Amen. Folks, that is truth that will transform your life. Thank you, Pastor Eddie. Let's pray together. Lord, thank you so much today for visiting with us once again at Lenten Live. We ask your blessings and your favor upon now your word that was sent forth. I know it will accomplish exactly what you have sent it to do. It will accomplish changed hearts. This morning, help us to remember to remember in Jesus' name. We'll see you here next Wednesday, same time, same place. God bless you. Bye-bye now.